Hi guys, how you doing? It's about time I shared something with you. Over the last couple of months, obviously life has been quite interesting. I have started to compile a journal that really just has my tea bag designs in. So there's a little bit of something that I've done over the last few years. So what I've done is just taken a good old fashioned scrapbook and decided that I would start putting my items inside. At the top here we've got some round tea bags that I decided to tissue paper. First of all I took the dried contents out, ironed them and then gessoed them white and then using this decorative tissue paper I glued over the top and this is just the front of my journal. Now inside we have some eco dyed and this is some kindly gifted paper that my friend Sandra passed so you will see some eco dyed it's actually a photocopy of her work and here you can see round tea bags going around the edge of what looks like ferns now this was inspired from me going to see a sculpture I've used good old classic pipe cleaners here and they actually have the pipe cleaners inside they tea bags stuck onto some calico and that works as a fabric paper and I was thinking about doing a tea bag sculpture but I just wanted to put this in because that has not yet come into fruition so as we turn the page this summer I decided to do some indigo dyeing now you can see these tea bags have been sewn together using a sewing machine, folded and dyed using indigo dye. Now the problem with indigo dye, it's great if nobody is going to be touching the surface. You've got to bear in mind certain dyes here will get absorbed into the physical skin. So this was me just playing. It's there for my own records. I've also enclosed a little bit of vintage lace and started to make some notes. Across on the right, yet again, different styles of tea bags here from various ways and methods of colouring. I got some Procyon dye and I actually used the remainder of the Procyon dye and put my tea bags inside. So this is why we've got this vividy type orange. We've used some tea bags that have been elderberry dyed and back across we've got some more of the indigo. We've done a more of a scrapbooking and a journal. I've just enclosed some ephemera. Here we have this rectangle tea bag that I actually put a little bit of stuffing inside and actually quilted using my machine. I've got some stamping on a handmade envelope here as well. These are all little things at times I have chosen to do with my tea bags. I've done a little collage here. I shared with you how to use cocoon silk and make it into paper on one of my tutorials. And whilst I was there with the indigo dye, I've just kept some of my scraps of fabric as well. And yet again, we have a mixture of stamp tea bags. Some, this is onion skinned dyed calico here. And we've got a lovely stamped round tea bag. If you're looking for round tea bags and you happen to be not in the UK, which they do tend to be predominantly quite available readily, you can go to somewhere like Walmart and look for the English blend Tetley. I believe I've been told it's in a lilac box. So that's something if you are going to yourself, well, we don't have round tea bags. Here again, yet again, more indigo dyed, but I started to fold my round tea bags up and glue them down just using a glue stick. And just this is a variation here of just the principle of what I've done. This one here has got a padding on the left hand side and I've left it flush on the right. I've yet again written about my work and as you can see, one round tea bag there with some tissue paper over the top. Across here we have some of that lovely 
photocopied eco dyed from Sandra and it goes nicely with these round tea bags here. These are eco dyed, these actually got boiled in a vat of leaves and so they have been squished and sewn in a dramatic way. So we have a variety of eco dyed tea bags, one in the centre here some normally dried tea bags as they would if you just use them after boiling your tea. Indigo here with a variation of colours, much darker here and much lighter as we go across. On the eco dyed tea bags, I did not boil them. I took the tea straight out of the bags so they were plain white and ironed ready to go in the eco dyeing vat and I really like the beautiful colorations that you've got rustic browns and beautiful vivid purples again the eco dyed theme carries on now I'd started doing some patchwork taking rectangular Yorkshire tea folding them cutting them you have got here blackberry tea and that's how I obtained the lovely more less subtle let's say purpled undertones and just the normal tea bag left as it was some of them have gone quite dark round tea bags again folded and sewn using a machine i think at this point it gets a little difficult once you start piecing many many pieces together because there's lots of sewing and sometimes if your tea bag dries too hard and too harsh the sewing machine will actually rip into your tea bag my only recommendation when sewing is to make sure that your straight stitch it is at its longest available. I've also done some zigzagging on the bottom right hand corner. I've done some paper piecing and I put some cardboard underneath so this is layered up cardboard and I just wanted to do some Christmas decorations this is what inspired me originally at the bottom here I've got some little tea bags that have gone into pockets and I have just played around with round tea bags and rectangular tea bags and if I remember correctly these are traditional clipper tea bags and I've just taken out the contents cut off the top and at sometimes I've had to re-glue them closed. I happen to have some tags going on here and again I've just put two round tea bags together and that could be used as a decoration. Obviously it's sitting flat at present moment in this particular sketchbook more of my rustic style tea bags using again elderberry and I just love the way that they have dried in the natural sunlight more re uh, rectangular tea bags and this happens to be the brand and on the corner there I started doing just cutting into my triangles and making little cutting into my tea bags and making triangles it's definitely been some time since I've spoken to you guys. Here we've got some gessoed tea bags and with some stamping. More gessoed tea bags, more stamping. But I use colouring pencils which are Derwent and you can actually use water and they're water soluble. And I just enjoyed playing around with those so I've left one unstamped. At the top, more stamping done again, but this time more of those colouring pencils, but I didn't hit them with water. And you've just got a variety going from left to right. I then found myself some wonderful tissue paper by Paper Mania. I've been unable to replicate or purchase any more. And so what I done was just using an old fashioned glue stick, glued the tissue paper onto the tea bags. And then I took my machine and decided to sew in zigzags, straight lines. And also I introduced a white gel pen. And you can see this white is my writing across the actual tea bag. And then I've just used it to highlight sections of this particular butterfly here. 
I went ahead and tried some bonder web and this didn't work as efficiently as I had liked. I basically underneath our round tea bags they have got a section of bonder web actually ironed over the top so it has a glued surface and this is a napkin that I've placed over the top. Unfortunately I don't think it is quite as transparent as I had particularly hoped. It still works and it's feasible but this was particularly work in progress. I also got given at Christmas some years back a wood tool that would burn and burnish into wood. I don't recommend. I tried, I did burn my tea bag, but like most things, tea bags actually have a form of plastic. So, one, you need good ventilation, and B, it's exceedingly dangerous because you can set fire to the tea bag. So, it's yet again, it's in here, it's been hit with a gel pen. I just wanted to experiment, but in reality, it's something that I'm not going to take forward anymore. At the top, you see a wool blanket. Now the wool blanket, I've used tea to actually dye it. So again, this is strawberry and blackberry tea and the wool blanket has just been soaked in the tea, dried. And what I've done is like a form of felting. I've ironed over the top whilst it was still wet. And by doing that, the fibres have actually shrunk and so it's exceedingly flat and very taut. I then went ahead and machine sewed and I've also used my stays on ink and stamped a butterfly. And you've got a variety of what looks like a very rusty style of wool blanket on your left. More stamping but done as in a tessellation of a tile. I made, I pulled the tea bags apart, I pieced them together hoping to make what looked like a sunflower. And on the right hand side I was mentioning rust. I actually put these tea bags into a rust vat and they have also had lots of embellishment placed on top. So they're sparkly and shiny. They've got, um, I used a heat gun and all of a moment the word escapes me but basically I had a go at just making these a pop in a roundabout way but it was not what I would consider as successful as I hoped. A variety of stitching with fabric then came into play. So all in all I basically done a little tutorial on how I actually cut into my tea bag, piece fabric underneath and then sewed with a sewing machine. I even got to the point where I've made this particular one which has a minute little tag because it actually has a pocket. But as you can see, you can see the silky style fabric. I've left this raw so you can get an idea of how I've pieced the tea bags together. On the right hand side more piecing of tea bags and this has a paper doily underneath set on some design paper on this tracing paper envelope which is very very tactile it would have been a book page more machine sewing and I've just enclosed last of my silky fabric on the top here we have this beautiful tea bag in this lovely silk that I've actually gone round and quilted just randomly. I believe somebody made a comment that it looks like a blueberry muffin and I blanket stitched all the outside and I think it's fab. Very time consuming but fun all the same. The simplistic, yet again, tea bags, and this was me playing around with the bonder web. So you can actually see the shiny glued surface here. So you can iron and stick anything onto it. You can also see where the glue has transferred, where I've just run my iron across. So that is it in its plain form. I've just got some wooden stamps and I used some paint and literally stamped onto the tea bags. 
more the tea bag up that was using the heat gun and the um, embossing tool for the wood. I've got a collage version of a round tea bag with a few others placed on top. So these are actually 3D and attempting to make some floral prep representation. I done what I considered my version of a zine. So here we have rectangular tea bags. I have a two-way section. I've got some Tim Holtz little figures cut out here and I decorated underneath and painted and stamped and then I went to Thailand and taking the inspiration from Thailand I done some freehand and just done some mountain forms dragonflies and just sea and water and just wanted to make a little bit of a landscape of my own Admittedly, now that the sign is glued into the book, it obviously cannot go out in its original format. So as you can see, your patience is exceedingly good. I've got some photocopies here of tea bags that I've done of the past. This is just for my own personal reference. More tea bags glued onto paper and turned into a large envelope so you just got that on paper and this is just tea bags actually glued upon themselves so nothing underneath just tea bags placed so they actually go over each other I was going back to working with the cocoon paper that I made and actually placing tea bags inside stamping on and pulling everything apart and layering it on to more tea so as you can see here we've just got this lovely alpaca more tea bags at the bottom here in variations of stamps and different color dyes more stamping on a couple of rectangular tea bags and back again to my cocoon stripped paper and more stamping and I just cut round and layered just really for enjoyment so if you wanted to make some cards the Yorkshire tea is what I, where I get all these wonderful rectangles from and I couldn't help but wanted to carry on so we've got these wonderful cricketers here which I just think is so poignant and this lovely stoned wall so with the stones I carried on the stone wall and done my imagination as if it was going round the side of the field. Layering up, taking die cuts that I had purchased from the pound shop and just really just playing around using tea bags as my paper source and then gluing and sticking. So there's a little bit of everything, a form of collage going on there. I hit these tea bags heavily with a sewing machine. What I was hoping to get was a scenic of trees, bushes and this part of filling with my sewing machine. Absolutely very labour intensive. The sewing machine held up well, the tea bags held up well. I then went ahead and tried a bit of stamping because I'd hit this with acrylic wax I do have a tutorial on that it's got a luster on it and makes it more malleable but one thing it didn't appreciate was being stamped over the top so I stopped I've kept it in my journal as a format of yet again a reference point this is what I done this is how I done it and could I change it of course I could I've got some decorations here. I had an old scarf and I basically pulled the scarf away and pulled it into pieces, placed a tea bag and started laying re layering up. I've got buttons, I've got stamped images of these ladies. I've even got a little shell here which I made using a mould, one of my Mod Podge moulds. And I think for the moment you bared with me long enough and that's as far as I've got to share with you today. Well I hope you enjoyed my tea bag art and I hope to be bringing you some updates really soon. Take care guys and thanks for keeping me in touch and you guys for watching me. See you later. Bye bye.